at her first. Hey, wait. Okay, thank you. All right, so this is a girl. The other part of her. <laughs> Over we go. Here it is. All right. B shaped uterus in the cat. Okay. Two horns coming up here. These are the uterine horns. Where they come together is called the body of the uterus. Just below the body of the uterus would be the vagina. Okay. I mean, the cervix right at the base and the vagina. At the ends of each uterine horn, you find an ovary. It's more visible on this side. Yep. Okay. So here's the end of the uterine horn here. This little round bean shaped thing right there, that's the ovary. And that is surrounded by the oviduct, which is this tissue right here. And there's one on this side too. The ovary is right there. It's surrounded by the oviduct. Okay. To keep the uterus in the right orientation, there are three major ligaments that hold things in place. There's one attached right to the end of the ovary, that's the ovarian ligament, All right up there. Then this material here, all this stuff, is called the broad ligament. And then there should be another one that's ripped that goes this way. It's like a string. That's called the round ligament. Okay, so ovarian, broad, and round. That holds everything up in the right orientation. Okay, and here's the kidneys here. Again, here's your ureter coming down to your urinary bladder, urethra, and out. Okay, now this is the boy. The boy's testicles are missing in action, but we do have a penis here. And. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they did with his. Yeah, what have, yeah, she did right. I have no idea what they did with his junk, but it's gone. And that's his bladder there. I have no idea. I have no idea what that one That's a mess. If we look at the, let's do the human female first. Okay, because these, these models will be on the, on the test as well. So this is the bladder, <coughs> this is the urethra, okay, this is the vagina, this is the fornix, this is the cervix, okay, this is the uterus. This right here is the ovary, the ovary is surrounded by the oviduct, and then the fallopian tube. Okay, the end of the oviduct is feathery looking, those are the fimbrae. And they'll sweep the egg once it's released from the ovary. It sweeps the egg up through the oviduct down to the fallopian tube. This is where fertilization happens. And then it travels down and implants in the wall of the uterus. Okay? And then you get something that looks like that. A baby. Okay. A human male. Okay, we have the scrotum. We have the testes, this is a structure called the epididymis, and I'll show you that on the sheath of the testicle. This is the spermatic cord coming up. It's got to come back through the abdominal wall. This is the wall of the abdomen here. We come through the inguinal canal. We come around. This big structure right here, this is the bladder. So that vas deferens, so that spermatic cord comes around, around the bladder like this, and it goes past these glands. The bulbourethral gland is the smaller one. The great big one down here is the prostate gland. Those add fluid to the sperm. Okay. If we take this off, you can see. So now here's our duct here coming in, bringing, bringing in the sperm, and this tissue here, all around here. This is all prostate tissue. This is the bladder. This is the urethra. Okay? And sometimes if the prostate enlarges in a man, it puts pressure on the urethra, which causes urinary problems for them. Okay? So the sperm comes in right after the bladder, joins the urethra, comes down through the urethra, through the penis right here, and then out of the body. This tissue here is erectile tissue. This is cavernosum. And then the tissue right around the urethra is called spongiosum. Okay? They have these exact pictures in your textbook. Take a look at it. All right? So you should take a look at that in your book as well. Okay? And then we have kidney. And they'll use one of the, I mean, they're all the same, but they'll use one of these kidney models as well. Okay? So this. 
membrane surrounding the kidney is the capsule. Okay, we see the kidney is a bean shape, right? And this indent here in the bean, that's called the hillis. That's where the ureter, the tube coming out of the kidney, the ureter exits, the renal vein, the renal artery come and go. All right, same. That same space. Okay? If we look inside, this layer of tissue here on the outside, this is called the cortex. Okay? And all this in the middle is called medulla. And in the medulla, we have these structures. These are called the renal pyramids. Okay? The filtrate, your, your kidneys. Yes. You say all this here is the medulla. Does it include all these things? All just medulla this? just means the inner part of the kidney. Okay? As opposed to cortex, which is just the outer part of the kidney. Okay? Um, so these are the renal pyramids. When stuff is filtered out of your blood, that filtrate drips out of the ends, the tips of these pyramids, called the papillae. And it drips into these little openings called minor calyxes. Those drain into larger openings called major calyxes. And all of that eventually dumps into this big opening here. That's called the renal pelvis. And the filtrate exits the kidney through the ureter down to the bladder, and then out through the urethra, okay? And you can see that some of this cortex material comes down in between these pyramids. Those are called the renal columns. They separate the pyramids. Okay? So if we look at that, if we look at that in a little sheep kidney here, it's a little hard to see, but this is the cortex out here, this area. And then you can see if I just kind of pull this a little bit. You see the you see the pyramids in there, separated by the columns. These are the pyramids, and these are the columns. And this would be the in here somewhere would be the renal pelvis, and then exiting through the ureter. Which one's the pyramid? And which one's the column? The columns are the the pieces that separate. Okay. And they look like little columns coming down. Okay. And the pyramids are these things in between. Kind of. Little okay. Columns. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is a sheep testicle. The testicles are covered by two membranes, a really thick outer membrane called the vaginalis and a thinner inner membrane called the albuginia. It's a little hard to see here. There's actually two membranes here, but this outer one is really thick. That's the vaginalis. So if they clip this, it'll say vaginalis. It's fine. Okay? And then you can see that there's this U-shaped piece of the testicle right here. That's called the epididymis. And what happens is if we open this up, this material here looks like really dense material. This is a, these are actually microscopic tubules. This is where all the sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules. And then it's sent out from there through the epididymis and eventually out the spermatic cord or the deferens. Either one is fine. We call it either one. And then also along with that spermatic cord, or that deference is chromastinor muscle, which is what most of this is. This is all chromastinor muscle. And that's used to withdraw the testicle up into the abdomen if it's cold, because you have to protect the sperm from the cold. Okay? And these are housed outside of the body because 98.6 is too hot for sperm. So they're housed outside of the body in the, in the sac called the scrotum. Okay? This whole thing is outside of the body. This whole thing sits in the scrotum. And that's why when it gets cold, you have to bring it into the body to keep the sperm warm, but you can't make sperm when it's too hot. So that's why they descend back down into the scrotum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now my um, my nephew's father had epididymitis, and I guess he swelled up like basketballs. Like, that must be absolutely horrifying. My sister.